So word on the street lately has been that there might be a bug in UCF, one that's affecting dashbacks. And uh, this is a thing that I thought that maybe I could help out with. The uh, idea is that somehow the uh, latest UCF version, UCF uh, 0 0.84, made some change that maybe messed up how dashbacks work. So some people, especially some top players, have been thinking that their dashbacks have been resulting in slow turnarounds rather than the quick dashback that is necessary for high-level play. So in this video, we're going to look at three things. We're A, going to look at how UCF works in regards to dashbacks. B, assuming this bug exists, analyze where it might live and try to figure out how it might even work. And C, look at empirical tests to see if does the bug actually exist at all, or you know, is thing, are things working normally. Sound good? Let's run it. So in Melee, a dashback is an incredibly basic technique. It's not like wave dashing or shield dropping or something like that. That's like some advanced technique that was invented later on in the game's lifetime. Dashing back is kind of what it sounds like. It's when you're just sort of standing there and then you, on the control stick, press backwards really fast on the control stick like this, causing your character to dash quickly backwards in the opposite direction. It's actually, the name makes a lot of sense. Um, the, uh, the thing is, if you press it too slowly, or if uh, you get unlucky, as we'll dig into in just a moment, um, you won't get a dash back. Rather than your character dashing quickly in the other direction, you'll get this slow turnaround animation. And in a game of melee that's as fast and frenetic as a uh, high-level melee can be, uh, this can be a death knell for your character. So getting a re reliable dash back is an important thing for players of the game at a high level. So the way that dashbacks work in Vanilla Melee, that is the original version of the game. Can I make a quick aside here? Uh, I hate that Vanilla winds up being equated with bland and uninteresting. Vanilla is actually great. It's a wonderful flavor. It's nuanced and delicious. I don't know why it has such a bad reputation for being bland and uninteresting. But I don't know, whatever, that's just me. So anyway, in regular melee, uh, without UCF, the way that dashbacks work is you have to, within one frame, so it's about 16.6 milliseconds, move the joystick from its neutral position all the way to uh, beyond 80% uh, uh, of the uh, total uh, controller width. So uh, a controller in raw units goes between a negative 80 and positive 80, and so you have to uh, get to at least 64 raw units. 64 out of 80 on the control stick within one frame. And so that's a problem because if you can't move that quickly, then you're just not going to get a dash back. And as if that weren't bad enough, a uh, polling gets into the mix. So let's talk about polling. So controller input in Melee, just like almost every other video game, is polled. That means that uh, the video game, right before the frame executes, checks the state of the controller to see what the user has input. So that means that even if you move the control stick really, really fast, right, at some point in the real physical universe, your controller will be halfway from neutral to 1.0, like all the way over uh, the edge. That means that even if you're moving the control stick really fast, like you're really hit, uh, good at hitting dashes, you might just get unlucky and have the controller pull right when you're at, say, like 0.4. Or something like that, which in raw units would be you know, somewhere in the middle, but less than 65, getting you a slow turnaround. So there's literally nothing you can do in regular melee to completely avoid getting a slow turnaround. There's always going to be some amount of error that's just out of your control and just luck based. And that's kind of bullshit, right? And that's sort of why UCF was created. Oh, additionally, uh, there's also a, a matter of controller lottery. A lot of people know that uh, some uh, melee controllers are better at certain techniques than others, and this is where the controller lottery tends to come in with dashbacks. You see, over time, your joystick will tend to degrade. Mine actually has quite a bit of wiggle room here in the joystick. You can probably see this. Um, it's uh, uh, like very loose at this point after many years of uh, playing melee. Um, this uh, controller, by the way, was once described by a uh, local Arizona player, Taj, as possibly the worst controller he's ever held. So, take that for what it's worth. And uh, this large wiggle room, while it might be kind of bad in general, is actually good for dashbacks, because that uh, wiggle room is dead zoned. It's just an area where the controller doesn't register the input. 
And so you can move the controller pretty far, potentially all the way out here into what would normally be a slow turnaround zone before the controller registers the input whatsoever. And so that kind of in a weird way makes it better at doing dashbacks. But the thing is, there's kind of a trade-off because the more dead zone it has, the worse it's at uh, doing other techniques like shield dropping, where you actually really need for it to be able to register at these subtle levels that are um, not all the way at the edges of the control stick. So this sort of controller lottery effect and the fact that controllers degrade over time and also the fact that we're not making any new ones of these, at least not cheaply, uh, sort of made us as a community come together and decide to change the rules of how dashbacks work. That and some other rules, but we're not getting into shield dropping in this video. So what UCF does is something that was, at least at the time of its creation, a bit controversial. It, rather than changing something to do with controllers, it actually changes how the game works under the hood, the game engine itself, how dashes uh, are made. So rather than needing to hit that uh, 64 raw unit uh, threshold all within one frame. You now have two frames worth of time in order to hit that window. This sort of eliminates this uh, pulling and it also helps to alleviate the controller lottery issue. Basically making dashbacks a little bit easier, literally just by one frame, makes all the difference. So that means that the rules for our dashbacks now are different than from regular, let's call it vanilla melee. Okay, so the exact conditions of a UCF dashback are a bit complicated. Are you sitting down? Let's get into this. Uh, so starting from the first frame that we exit, the X dead zone. So by that we mean we have to either go from the dead zone out of it into what would be a tilt or possibly a dash, or you have to go across the dead zone, so like from this side out to the other side, right? So starting from that frame. So within two frames of that, you have to do two things. You have to A, hit the uh, 0.8 processed X barrier, this red zone over here. And B, you also have to move uh, greater than 75 raw units in the X direction in total from that starting position. So uh, in order to get into any of that, uh, we also have to explain what the heck uh, processed and uh, raw uh, units even are. So I don't know, let's talk about that. So at every frame of the game, your controller sends two values for the main stick, for the control stick. Um, it might feel to you as you're moving it around like it's just one thing, one value, but it's actually two, right? The X and Y coordinates, which are completely independent variables that are sent as uh, one byte signed integers to the game. That means that both the X and the Y coordinates of your controller um, are capable of sending values between negative 128 and positive 127. But the game only actually cares about values that are between negative 80 and positive 80. So what it does is it takes these numbers and processes them. It puts them through some function that does a couple of things to them. Um, one is it's going to clamp them down to just the, the unit circle around uh, those values between uh, negative 80 and positive 80. Um, and also it's going to dead zone some values in the middle. Um, that dead zoning is sort of what's responsible for those uh, uh, missed uh, up B angles for like Fox and Falco. Uh, sometimes if you try to get it like just barely too shallow, then you'll go straight up or uh, straight horizontal. It's because of this. Um, and you really want the game to do that because otherwise uh, you, without the uh, dead zone, um, you would wind up accidentally pushing like up or down. You would wind up jumping every time you're trying to dash dance. So it's actually a good thing that that dead, uh, dead zone exists. And that happens um, not by the controller, but actually by the video game itself. It takes those inputs and uh, just flattens down any input that happens within uh, these ranges here down to zero. This distinction matters because sometimes what happens is you might move the controller where the X value uh, moves past the uh, 64 threshold, therefore satisfying condition A over here. But if your Y value is sufficiently low, what happens is the game's processed inputs might not meet the uh, threshold as well. Because of basic trigonometry here, what happens is the uh, eventual endpoint in the processed input space winds up becoming short. So um, this actually matters that we need to know both the processed and the raw inputs in order to tell whether a UCF dashback was successful or not. So the question that we really want to answer is, in UCF version 0.84, did the conditions for getting a dashback suddenly change? Now, I, I want to be super clear about this part. 
Uh, it is not crazy to think that there might be a bug in UCF. Uh, this entire system, both UCF and Slippy and basically the entire technology stack that runs modern Melee events are incredibly complex and have no business running as well as they do. This wouldn't be the first time some sort of a bug happened and it certainly won't be the last. So uh, the, I took this sort of allegation uh, with a lot of seriousness and uh, I think that we can approach it with uh, an empirical mindset rather than a dismissive one. So uh, let's start to look at what we can actually do to analyze this to see our dashbacks working as intended. So what I did is I wrote a Python script. It's available on my GitHub over here. And what it does is it looks through a group of Slippy files, frame by frame, and tries to answer the question, is there any inputs that occurred within the game that should have resulted in a UCF dashback but didn't? Basically, is there any instance in which the behavior of UCF might have changed, where a dashback should have occurred but did not? Also, I made a, a dashback bot that uh, runs right here. That's what you're looking at. That's a, a little bot, it's sort of like Smashbot, but it's really bad. All it does is just go to the middle of Final Destination and try to dashback. Um, what it does is it uh, randomizes how fast it's moving the joystick and just does that back and forth over and over again for an entire game. That way we can generate lots and lots of random uh, inputs for uh, dashing back. Um, in the security field, we might call this fuzz testing. But um, in any case, uh, this is a good uh, source of data for getting lots and lots of examples of dashbacks. So if uh, there's an instance in which uh, somebody should have gotten a dashback but missed one, uh, we would hope to see one here. So uh, we're gonna be looking at data split into three groups. Uh, the first is going to be stuff from our dashback bot. This is generated data from our own machine that's just going to be dashing back and forth as a good uh, a sample of what dashes should, in theory, look like from a variety of different settings. Uh, group number two is uh, data from a live tournament, um, a recent major that you probably watched yourself. And then group three is stuff from a non-UCF game. So that's just regular 1.02 melee being played without any other uh, additional modifications. That way it's a good control that we should expect to see some failures in. All right, sound good? Let's do it. So first up is our control. We are looking at here the results from our non-UCF games. And we have uh, five successful dashbacks. That's five dashbacks that we should expect to see dashbacks for, and then 23 failed dashbacks. That is, uh, in the UCF rules, 23 dashbacks that should have occurred but didn't. Now, this is expected. These are games that are literally not running UCF, so the UCF rules shouldn't apply and we should expect to see some failed dashbacks. That's good. It means our script is working. All right, next is our generated data. This is stuff from our dashback bot, going back and forth in the middle of Final Destination doing dashbacks randomly moving the stick as quickly as it wants to. And so the results for that, we see uh, 569 uh, successful dashbacks and zero failed fat dashbacks. That's pretty good, starting to look pretty solid. All right, and last are our tournament data. For this, we went through all of the on-stream tournament data uh, for a recent major, and our results look like this. We have 1,266 successful dashbacks, that is, uh, dashbacks that we should expect to succeed that passed the criteria for a UCF dashback and did. And then failed dashbacks, zero. That is exactly zero instances where we expect to see a dashback and did not. So that's pretty good. And this is, of course, from a tournament using UCF version 0 0.84. So from this, we can clearly conclude that UCF dashbacks on version 0 0.84 are working as intended. Now look, I get that the vibes are off, but I can't debug the vibes, all right? And I'm not even necessarily telling you that you're wrong if you think that your inputs are off or something. There's a ton of stuff that could still be going wrong on your particular setup. Especially if you're playing Slippy Online, there's a bunch of things. Uh, these guys, for instance, these are uh, the Wii U uh, uh, con uh, controller adapters, love to just randomly reset on their uh, polling rate and that could definitely change how your inputs feel in sort of an indescribable, maybe something is broken kind of way. So if you're thinking that I'm not convinced by this, I know that something is wrong with my setup, uh, go and pop into the Slippy Discord. We got a bunch of helpers out there that know a whole bunch about the tech stack and can help you debug any potential problems that might be happening. All right, that's all I got for you today. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you play Melee, remember to donate to Fizzy.
Later.